lawsuits taking aim against companies who enforced mandates of the COVID vaccines on their employees have been mounting here in the U.S. And last year, we saw the first major settlement of these lawsuits with North Shore University Health System, who agreed to pay $10.5 million to 523 workers who had either been fired over refusing the vaccine or who had caved and took the shot to stay employed. And now a group of individuals are taking aim at leadership in government directly, namely President Biden, the White House staff, and others for alleged illicit censorship. Well, that, my friends, is going to be the subject of today's episode. And so from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. A group of individuals injured by the COVID-19 vaccines have filed a major lawsuit against the federal government, including President Biden, Xavier Becerra, and several other prominent federal government figures, citing, among other things, massive government censorship as part of an orchestrated illicit scheme to cover up discussion of any material problems associated with the COVID-19 vaccines. The plaintiffs here include React 19 co-founder Brianne Dressen, Sean Barkovich, Christy Dobbs, Nikki Holland, Susanna Newell, and Ernest Ramirez, all who use social media and have had or had accounts on several platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and GoFundMe. Importantly, all of the plaintiffs are either suffering from the COVID-19 vaccine injuries or, in the case of Mr. Ramirez, bereaved given the loss of his 16-year-old son, Ernest Ramirez Jr., just five days after taking his first dose of the Pfizer mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. All of the plaintiffs here have relied completely on social media to communicate and amplify their concerns about the COVID-19 vaccine and their related injuries. Now, we here at Trial Site News have reported that while over 230 million Americans are considered fully vaccinated at this point, which includes boosters, Rare side effects can and do occur, particularly with such a large emergency response program involving hundreds of millions of doses of novel COVID-19 vaccines. While the government keeps any ongoing estimates of the COVID-19 vaccine injuries close to its vest, we here at Trial Site News have derived estimates from the government at anywhere from a few thousand to perhaps as many as 50,000 cases that involve sufficient impact on quality of life to label the case as a COVID-19 vaccine-related injury. Now, we here at Trial Site News have looked into this ourselves, and we estimate that conservatively, there are somewhere between half a million and maybe two million people who have been materially impacted by adverse events leading to ongoing degradation in the quality of life. The government, though, waived all pharmaceutical company liability except for extremely narrow cases that were nearly impossible to prove. While the government took on the liability under the National Public Health Emergency, they have evaded any real responsibility with their Countermeasures Injury Compensation Program, or the CICP. To date, for example, just a handful of awards have been handed out at about $1,500 per award on average, with thousands and thousands of people stuck waiting in a queue that it looks like might take years to process. In fact, as we covered here on our YouTube channel last week, the program is so ridiculously run that not only are they grossly understaffed, but the department doesn't even have computer systems in place to handle people making requests. Here is what I said last week on the subject. According to 11 Alive, Story is recovering two years later from a cascade of health problems after receiving the vaccine. As the medical bills mount, he has no idea if his claim will be approved. He said to 11 Alive that they keep asking for more, and it's just roadblock after roadblock. For months now, 11 Alive Investigates has been trying to get answers on why the process is taking so long. In response, lawmakers across the country have responded with their own questions. Mike Collins, for example, representing the 10th District of Georgia, has demanded to discuss the growing crisis with CICP leadership. The CICP's leadership is now claiming that the technology is the core of the problem. This according to Rebecca Lindstrom from 11 Alive. For example, Collins reported that the CICP director program lamented the lack of technology to support the scale out of the program. As Mike Collins put it, 
they did not even have a computer system in place, a software system to handle people making requests or even inquiring about what their status was, which was what you were talking about in y'all's reporting. Although the CICP recently launched a claims portal to track claims, they are now purportedly requesting an additional $15 million from Congress to, quote, enhance communication, end quote, as well as substantially increase its capacity to review at least 2,000 claims. So back to the lawsuit. It alleges that because all six plaintiffs have relied on social media as a means of sharing their personal experiences after they or a loved one were medically harmed after taking the vaccine, exchanging advice, medical research, and support with others who are injured after taking the vaccine, and engaging with other users in private support groups for vaccine-injured individuals and their loved ones. Plaintiffs' use of social media in these ways have been met with heavy and ongoing censorship. Now, the lawsuit bolsters this claim by pointing out that numerous emails as well as evidence of regular meetings, phone calls, and exchanges of information between defendants and major social media platforms unveiled in Missouri v. Biden, the Twitter files, and defendants' own public documents, reveal that defendants have been directing social media censorship of constitutionally protected speech when it runs counter to the message that the government wishes to propagate. One of the primary objectives of the defendants' mass censorship program has been to chill and suppress speech related to the COVID-19 vaccine and its sometimes devastating side effects. As just one example, in an email exchange in March 2021 between a Facebook executive and the White House Director of Digital Media, Rob Flaherty, informed the Facebook executive that we are gravely concerned that your service is one of the top drivers of vaccine hesitancy, period. We want to know that you are trying. We want to know how we can help. And we want to know that you are not playing a shell game. This would all be a lot easier if you would just be straight with us. In a clear attempt to appease the White House official, the Facebook executive replied about a week later, informing Flaherty that Facebook had made a number of policy changes, including the removal of groups, pages, and accounts, containing, in the executive words, often true content that can be framed as sensation, alarmist, or shocking. Interestingly, the lawsuit also takes aim at one private entity, the Stanford Internet Observatory, or the SIO, which calls itself a cross-disciplinary program of research, teaching, and policy engagement for the study of abuse in current information technologies with a focus on social media. The SIO launched a program during the pandemic that they called the Virality Project and used it as a means of tracking and censoring COVID-related speech across social media platforms. In fact, the Virality Project named one of the plaintiffs in this lawsuit, Brianna Dressen, directly in the report saying about her that an injury story that does not have a proven causal link to the vaccine nevertheless garnered high spread because it was picked up by a major anti-vaccine activist and by conservative politicians engaged in prior anti-vaccine activities. Furthermore, according to the lawsuit, they allege that Crucially, the Virality Project expressly admits that it worked closely with federal government agencies and officials to carry out this joint censorship enterprise, and that it seeks to develop even closer ties. According to its report, among VP's key stakeholders are federal health agencies, which include the CDC and the Office of the Surgeon General, which are engaged in continuous, ongoing communication and close collaboration with VP to effect a whole-of-society effort to include an active role for the government in censoring disfavored vaccine-related speech. As alleged in further detail herein, SIO has plainly worked in concert with the government defendants to censor speech on social media regarding the COVID vaccine and its side effects. SIO is thus sued as a de facto government agent. As Brianne Dressen shared with us here at Trial Site News, this is the first ever lawsuit in the U.S. brought by COVID-19 vaccine-injured persons. The U.S. government has no business censoring people who are speaking up about legitimate injuries they have received from the COVID-19 countermeasures. So who then are the plaintiffs suing here? Well, filing the action in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas Galveston Division, the plaintiffs sue the following. Rob Flaherty, the White House Director of Digital Strategy in his official capacity, 
Joseph Biden Jr., President of the United States in his official capacity, Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House Press Secretary in her official capacity, Courtney Rowe, the White House COVID-19 Director of Strategic Communications and Engagement in her official capacity, Clark Humphrey, White House Digital Director for the COVID-19 Response Team in her official capacity, Department of Health and Human Services, Xavier Becerra, Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services in his official capacity, Vivek Murray. Murthy, United States Surgeon General in his official capacity, Eric Walder, Chief Engagement Officer for the Surgeon General in his official capacity, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Carol Crawford, Chief of the Digital Media Branch of the Division of Public Affairs at the CDC in her official capacity, Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security in his official capacity, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jen Esterly, Director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, in her official capacity. The Stanford Internet Observatory, Alex Stamos, Director of the Stanford Internet Observatory, and Renee Duresta, Research Manager of the Stanford Internet Observatory. And so the next step against the draconian overreach by the U.S. government is now taking place. And naturally, we'll be keeping an eye on this lawsuit going forward. This is intriguing, my friends, and we'll have to see where this goes. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. For more content like this, be sure to check back to this channel daily, Monday through Friday, or for written articles published every day, seven days a week, feel free to visit us at trialsitenews.com. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.